So, you know, in video games, you have different bosses, you know, in the old classic video games, different villains that you overcome, right? You go through the different levels, you defeat the villain, you go up a level. I've always really loved the idea of gamifying my inner demons, right? And so instead of seeing the inner struggles that I've had as some heavy burden, something that is weighing on me, instead, the frame that I like is, oh, this could be the most epic adventure of my life. How am I going to defeat this thing? How am I going to overcome this problem that I'm struggling with? And I actually do see it that way. You know, you go ask someone who's overcome anxiety or someone who's overcome depression or someone who's overcome an addiction, and they will tell you that that experience of change taught them so many things that they wouldn't have changed that journey for anything. Welcome to part two of this Anxiety Masterclass. I'm Mike Slavin. I'm here with my colleague at High Existence, John Brooks. We're a collective of creators who care passionately about living with wisdom and wonder. And one of the big things that hold people back from living the life that they're capable of living is anxiety. Anxiety creates this barrier, this sort of uh, this fencing around their life, keeping them enclosed and keeping them from really seizing the opportunities that are available to them and keeps them from enjoying their life, enjoying the blessings and the beautiful things that they already have. So that's why we're focused on helping people overcome anxiety and, and heal these anxious patterns that feel like they're keeping, keeping them from living smaller so that they can regain control of their life and release the grip that anxiety has over them. So John is an anxiety educator. He's someone who's gone on a, a, an intense healing journey with anxiety himself. And he's going to share with us some important pieces about how you can truly overcome anxiety so that you can live a life that feels more deeply in alignment with who you are, with your authentic expression, and all of that good stuff. So John, thank you so much for being here. Just to kick things off, right off the bat, when people think about overcoming anxiety, what are the things that, that come to mind for most people? What is the sort of rudimentary understanding for how to deal with anxiety from your perspective? It's usually an extreme set of behaviors that goes all in on one particular style of intervention. So an example of that would, might be to get out of your comfort zone. Right. And then you just sort of like hammer away at doing fear challenges incessantly. And all of these approaches have a seed of truth to them. Right. They're, they're based on research or anecdotal evidence. But the problem is with these interventions is that they're too one dimensional. Right. We are just hammer away at one thing instead of looking at our life and the whole spectrum of anxiety tools in a holistic way. Another type of overcoming anxiety intervention would be coming up with a daily practice. You know, like if I just sit and meditate 20 minutes a day, then I hope that eventually I just won't have anxiety. That's another big one that, that people have. And again, meditation is an amazing tool, but simply meditating for 20 minutes a day and hoping that it will ease your anxiety is not really a system that I would put all of my faith into. It may work, it may help a bit, it may not, right? So, um, yeah, those are some big ones. People coming up with daily practices and just hoping that things will get better and being patient. And then the other one is going really all into something extreme and having the blinkers on when it comes to all of the other interventions that could also be useful. Would you say there's a one-size-fits-all technique that will work for everyone? if they're trying to overcome their anxiety? No, but I would say that there's a one size fits all strategy and that's the one that I teach. What that strategy looks like is the integration of ancient wisdom. So that means stoicism and Buddhism in particular with the modern findings in neuroscience combined with my own experience tinkering away and experimenting over many years with different types of anxiety and overcoming them, 
into a system where I've distilled the most potent, effective interventions that cover the whole spectrum of anxiety tools, because anxiety tools, there are a lot of them in different categories. But over my research, I've, I've found what they all have in common, and I've come up with some specific categories for them. And the, the approach is that we, we can't just do one thing and expect a certain kind of result. We have to look at our life. We have to look at our thoughts. We have to look at our biology. And what I teach is a truly holistic approach to overcoming anxiety. Instead of this, oh, this you know, CBT method is the thing that will help you. Or, oh, this breathwork system is the thing that will help you. It's a case of looking at everything and finding the gems in all of the different disciplines, disciplines from 2000 years old to the most recent findings in neurobiology and neuroscience. So there's this analogy that I think about um, because I feel like there's a lot of magic bullet uh, sort of thinking where people want that one thing you know, that one technique that can just do it and solve it for them. Um, When it sounds like your approach is a lot more, uh, it has a lot of experimentation. It has to do with understanding the options that are available to you and employing them and really being uh, connected to the impact that these techniques are having. And the magic bullet thing kind of, it frames dealing with our anxiety like, we're all tangled up in anxiety in the same way, but because of our unique life paths, our unique experiences, we get tangled up in anxiety in different ways. So that means the solution to that is going to be different depending on the person. If you think about headphones, wired headphones, of course, a lot of people will use, you know, the, the wireless these days, but if you put these in your pocket, they can often get all tangled up. So you can think of this tangle as sort of the, the way that, Uh, anxiety manifests itself in your experience. It always tangles differently though. So it's a unique tangle that someone is experiencing. So to untangle it, there are different things you're going to have to pull on to to make it sort of come back into alignment. And so uh, that's why a one size fits all strategy doesn't work because the complexity of uh, an individual's anxiety could be very different from the other person and their different proclivities and tendencies mean that actually this technique will be more useful for them, even though this technique over here will be uh, better for somebody else. And so I think that's an interesting way of, of thinking about it in terms of um, the uniqueness of our predicament. Now, that doesn't mean that we're isolated and alone in our experience of anxiety. Ultimately, the headphones are tangled and that experience uh, is is universal in what that feels like, or pretty universal. Of course, there are, there are differences, but the experience of anxiety is something basically everybody has felt in their life. And so you're not alone in that. We're going to do a flashback of what we covered in the last video in this masterclass. We talked about three traps. There's the personal failing trap, there's the avoidance trap, and there was the elimination trap. And so we'll briefly flash back to those, what those are, so you can get caught up on that pretty quickly. So one of the ideas that I learned from the trauma researcher, Bessel van der Kolk, is that one of the main reasons people tend to end their life when they come back from the war, when when they have PTSD, is not the pain of the trauma necessarily, but it's the feeling of isolation that the trauma gives them. It's the feeling of being separate and ashamed and nobody can relate to them. That's the truly painful thing that makes them just want to leave, right? Because if you're in pain, but you have an amazing support network and you feel like people understand you, that's a lot more bearable than you're in pain and nobody gets it and everyone's judging you and everyone thinks that there's something wrong with you. And so when we are struggling with anxiety, we need to be very careful not to say to ourselves that we are a personal failure, that there is something wrong with us. A part of ourselves, our psyche, that is always watching ourselves, watching our behavior, watching how we interact with the world and making conclusions based on our behavior. And so if you constantly avoid certain things, on a deep level, a part of you will make the conclusion that there's a reason why you're avoiding it. And that the reason is that it's a terrible thing. 
So let's just say you have a fear of dogs. You avoid one dog, right? You feel a little bit better. You're, you avoid 20 dogs. You feel, it, you feel better. The same feeling every time. When you've avoided 100 dogs, 200 dogs, you've really cemented deep down, you've encoded this idea that dogs are to be avoided. They are a major danger. Maybe it started off because a dog barked at you, a very mild anxiety, right? So you just thought, oh, I don't like that. I'm going to walk away from them. But the more you repeat that behavior of avoiding, the more your, your brain thinks there's a reason for you to avoid that thing. And it, essentially a dog then becomes this symbol of danger, the symbol of terror. And your anxiety will be, be worse around dogs then because of that. In a nutshell, that's the, the overall idea with the avoidance trap. You're never going to truly live the life you want if you're avoiding things all the time. So the elimination trap, in my opinion, is the most important trap because this underlies our whole conception of anxiety and ourselves. So many of us feel that anxiety is something that we need to get rid of. How can I cut this out? How can I take a pill or give me some kind of quick fix that will just remove this bad thing? And over time, we learn to associate our anxiety as something undesirable, something unpleasant, essentially an evil, a part of ourselves that we hate, that we don't like, and we wish wasn't there. That's what we think when we have anxiety. The problem is with this elimination myth is that you forget to realize that anxiety exists for a reason. And the reason is a very important one. The reason is that it keeps you safe. So it's not about cutting out anxiety. It's about retraining anxiety and listening to it. And so when you feel anxiety, what's happening is there's a part of you that is screaming, danger, danger, danger. And if you try to push that down or not listen to it or have resentment towards that, it's not going to really get rid of it. In fact, it could actually make those emotions louder and more intense. But when you turn towards it and you start listening and you start showing compassion towards that part of you, that's when the voice of the anxiety might, may start to, to die down. And that's the beginning of developing a good relationship with that part of yourself. Many people have the approach of dwelling on their anxiety, feeling like they're a personal failure. That just makes it worse avoiding their anxiety, which makes the world feel smaller and smaller over time and isn't an effective strategy to truly healing or having the sort of adversarial approach of getting rid of and erasing and removing your anxiety, which will also make it worse. So what is the alternative here, John? What is the path that someone can follow to actually overcome the anxiety that they're experiencing so they can feel released from these patterns of behavior and these tendencies that keep them from living the life that they know in their heart uh, they could be living if they weren't held back by this anxiety. What is the path? So, you know, in video games, you have different bosses, you know, in the old classic video games, different villains that you overcome, right? You go through the different levels, you defeat the villain, you go up a level. I've always really loved the idea of gamifying my inner demons, right? And so instead of seeing the inner struggles that I've had as some heavy burden, something that is weighing on me, instead, the frame that I like is, oh, this could be the most epic adventure of my life. How am I going to defeat this thing? How am I going to overcome this problem that I'm struggling with? And I actually do see it that way. You know, you go ask someone who's overcome anxiety or someone who's overcome depression or someone who's overcome an addiction, and they will tell you that that experience of change taught them so many things that they wouldn't have changed that journey for anything, right? The insights that they got, the person that the journey made them become is incredibly valuable. And one of the things that I used to do a lot was create these maps of my psyche, things that I wanted to do, internal games that I wanted to play, so to speak, where I would want to do this exercise and then I'd want to move from that exercise to this other exercise and I would essentially gamify the journey and I would really consider it to be a hero's journey. It got rid of this 
desire to avoid all of the things that I was feeling anxious about and instead started turning toward them and asking myself, oh, how do I actually face these things? How do I overcome them? And it got rid of the personal failure myth because instead of seeing myself as some isolated, messed up individual, which isn't true, I started seeing myself as a hero battling something. You know, I had a cause. I was going to overcome this thing, this anxiety. And that path is a path to mastery. And anxiety is the perfect place to start because when you can overcome your anxiety, you can subdue an overactive mind. You can deal with your body telling you that there's danger in front of you. You can navigate all of these things. That opens up the possibility to navigate melancholy, anger, frustration, obstacles, pretty much anything that life gives you that is difficult. When you've learned to overcome something like anxiety, you feel a lot more competent and skilled. And the image that I use is the mind is a weapon, right? The mind is an incredible weapon. Think of what human beings have done with their minds. But what happens when the mind turns against itself? Then that weapon starts to attack you. It's like a a mental autoimmune issue, you know, where the things that are meant to fight infections are turning against you and are attacking you. But when you learn to wield the weapon that is your mind skillfully, you then become like a virtuoso samurai sword expert, where whatever is put in front of you, you can deal with it skillfully. And that could be any kind of emotion, any kind of obstacle, you can just cut right through it. And I really like that metaphor, that image, because that has been true for me. When you begin walking this path of mastery, what are the surprising things that start to occur that people don't often expect? Uh, what are the, the benefits that start to show up? You know, a lot of times people are, are explicitly focused on relief. They just don't want anxiety to be a problem anymore. They don't want it to hold them back. But my sense is that there's a lot more to this. There's a lot more that is made available to someone when they begin walking this path of mastery than just relief from the anxiety. I'm curious if you could speak to that a bit. For sure. When you're walking this path to mastery when it comes to anxiety, you start to really see the mechanisms with crystal clarity that cause your anxiety. It's almost like your mind becomes slowed down. You can really see how it's operating from a first person perspective. And you get this insane level of self-awareness and, and insight where I'm now able to see in real time when I'm making excuses, when I'm rationalizing, when I'm not facing something. And these are things that I've learned by overcoming my anxiety by really pursuing this path. Whereas I see now other people and I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, they're rationalizing, they're making an excuse, they're not facing the thing that is causing them discomfort. And I can see that within myself. And that opens up this amazing opportunity for me to express myself in such a way that other people will trust me more. Because I mean, if someone is very self aware, then it, the relationship is likely to be a, a lot better because you don't feel like there's this huge distance between your awareness of them and their awareness of them. So my relationships have become a lot deeper because of this. I'm able to have a lot more discipline as well because when you think about it, anxiety is a block on your action. If you feel anxious about something, it stops you from being able to act on the things that you otherwise would have been disciplined about. So, you know, people might say, well, disciplined people can wake up at 4am and go to the gym. But what if on the way to the gym, there's something that terrifies you? It doesn't matter how disciplined you are, you're not going to go to the gym, right? It's going to, it's going to be something that, that stops you. But when you learn to overcome the anxiety, you start to really see, oh, how am I actually not doing the things that I know I should be doing? What are the stories that I'm telling myself that stops me from doing the things that I'm doing? So one of the biggest benefits that, are, that has come from me overcoming my anxiety is now I feel in a position where if I want to do something, I can just do it, right? I don't feel like there's like a big deal about it. It's like, oh, there's this thing I want to do. I know it's good for me. I'll do it. It's like, it's almost like these feelings that would have otherwise gotten in the way as these blockers 
are no longer there. So this path from A to B, which otherwise would have had like 50 hurdles of fear and anxiety and worry and is now clear. So it's like, oh, I can just, I can just walk there now. It's easy. And so it actually makes you be able to tap into more discipline and, and pursue the things that would otherwise hold you back. And that means things like starting a podcast, writing articles, being creative, um, speaking to people. Do you feel like there are dreams that people have that can't even get off the ground because they won't even consciously consider them because they become so used to living within the walls, living within the constraints of the anxiety that there are, there are these sort of background dreams that can't, they, there's no life that can be brought into them because the anxiety has someone so constricted. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Anxiety is a dream killer. There's no, there's no two ways about it. Because to do anything epic or adventurous requires that you at least be able to navigate or cope with feelings of fear, right? There's just no two ways about it. How can anyone live an interesting life without there being risk and, and uh, you know, potential danger to that? And people who struggle with anxiety, they just the mere thought of that is enough to keep them in their tracks to, to stop them. So you have many people that will say things like, I really think I could be an insert, whatever you like there. You know, I think I could be a, a good writer. I think I have a book inside me. I think that I could have a cool YouTube channel. You know, people say that I, I have interesting things to talk about, you know, and yeah, like, you know, that can happen. And people do have a lot of talents, but they don't end up using those talents or expressing them because of this anxiety. It's like, what do people think about me? How am I going to cope with my own levels of perfectionism? And danger or perceived danger can come in many forms. In many of the examples that we've been giving, we've used real danger, right, of like physical harm happening. But you can be harmed socially, you can be harmed emotionally, your status can be harmed. And so these types of fears can lock people in place when it comes to doing creative work. Then it comes to your dating life, right? Like to, to date people, to have the kinds of relationships that you want, it really helps to be able to put yourself out there, right? If nothing else, putting yourself out there has to be the most important and unquestionable dating tip of all time, right? Like, it doesn't matter what plan you have. If you don't put yourself out there, how can you possibly meet new people and develop amazing relationships with people? Another big one is traveling. You know, a lot of people tell themselves that one day I'm going to travel, one day I'm going to go to, to this place, I'm going to visit this destination, and the years just tick by and nothing really happens. So I see it in many forms. One of the, the common forms is in relationships. So people just never really put themselves out there because they feel stuck in place. Another one is big life decisions like leaving home, moving to a new destination, going traveling, things like that. And another one is the, the life of the creative or the artist or someone who has a business idea. There's something inside you that you would like to put out into the world but anxiety just stops you and kills your dreams. And it's really painful, actually, to live in this state of, I know I could be something, I know I could do something, I know I could offer value to the world, but not yet. Not yet. And the not yet can turn into months and years, and then, you know, it doesn't feel very good. The, the shame increases and... And you, you struggle with more than just the anxiety. Now you have the anxiety, but on top of the anxiety, you have all of these dreams that are slowly diminishing as time passes. Another interesting thing that when it comes to anxiety, I'm not sure people contemplate often enough because, again, they're so preoccupied with just getting relief from the anxiety, understandably so the impact that we can have on others after we've appropriately navigated with the difficulties that we're faced with in dealing with our own personal form of anxiety, the confidence that that instills, the ability to connect with others who are also struggling with that, the level of emotional mastery, agility, 
and resilience that we then cultivate creates a space for others uh, to not only see a model of that, but then to begin to feel like, oh, this is possible for me too. But they can also feel safe in our presence because of the feelings of self-assuredness and core confidence. And one of the questions I have for you, John, is if you've considered what it means that you've, you've you know, deeply overcome difficult experiences of anxiety. You've gone on your own healing journey for mm. dealing with anxiety. And this journey has now led you to becoming the man that you are today. But as, you're a father as well. Have you considered what going through this journey means for your relationship to your son and what kind of parent you get to be as a consequence of that? So that's a, that's a beautiful question. And this does come into my mind a lot. And I get obviously a ton of meaning from my relationship with my son. And it feels to me so nice that I know in my heart, the journey that I've been on allows me to, and will continue to allow me to relate to my son in a way that will assist me in emotionally understanding the difficulties that he faces emotionally. You know, sometimes, unfortunately, we exist in a culture, some of us exist in a culture where the way that we're taught to deal with our emotions is to suppress them or ignore them or act like they're not there. But when you've been on this path of, of mastery and overcoming your anxiety, you learn to really break down the process, the mechanisms. You really learn to talk to yourself, improve your relationship to all of your negative, quote unquote, negative emotions. And by going through this journey, that means that if my son is having a tantrum, if he's feeling afraid, I've been on my own journey where I've experienced those things and held space for myself and learned how to relate to myself properly in these moments. So that means I can relate to him properly in those moments too. And it just, it just makes me feel so good just knowing that for the rest of his life, for as long as I'm in it, I will be able to be there for him as a rock, as a support and not someone that will not understand him or judge him or tell him to do dysfunctional things with his emotions and it's not about me coaching him or giving him advice, but just the presence and the energy that I've cultivated through my own journey, I think is in and of itself healing to other people. Absolutely. So there's this flood of meaning that can occur when we overcome our anxiety, where we get to be a space, um, you know, a generous space, an inviting space, a warm space for others who might be dealing with difficult emotions. The more comfortable we become with our own difficult emotions, the more we're able to invite others into becoming comfortable with their difficult emotions. Yes. And it can create this really powerful chain reaction of, of healing. So we've, we've talked about how there's this path of mastery that people can take that allows them to navigate, you know, around these traps of avoidance, the personal failing, a feeling like I'm, I'm something's wrong with me because I have anxiety around this elimination trap where people think, oh, I should be trying to get rid of this thing. And it's so bad to taking a perspective that allows us to transform our relationship to our anxiety and actually tap it for the wealth of wisdom that lives in those signals. And this is the path of mastery. So walking that path of mastery allows you to reclaim these dreams that otherwise are just going to die on the vine. They never get a chance to, to be brought to life because anxiety keeps us in this space of, of constriction. And, and it also opens the door for us to relate to people from this beautiful place where we get to have a really meaningful and impactful relationship with them where they get to uh, learn things about themselves as a consequence of that. Now, that doesn't mean that every we're going to have this transform, transformational impact on everyone we come across, but doing this deep work doesn't just impact us. It impacts those that we're close to and those that we love. And I think that can be um, that can be missed. And that's why this work is so important. This goes beyond just the relief of our own personal anxiety. This goes into making a difference in the lives of those you care about. So John, in the next video, I want to dive into the system that you've developed. We've talked about this path broadly, but I really want to mm -hmm. zoom in on the specifics 
and talk about the system that you've cultivated that you used for yourself to overcome the anxiety that you had been plagued with uh, for, for so many years and begin to give people a blueprint they can follow so that they can overcome anxiety themselves. So John, why should someone watch this next video? So my promise for you is that in the next video, you're going to learn some ideas and concepts about anxiety that you have never come across before. This will be new material and new material that can help you immediately to start changing your anxiety. When I share my system that I used to combat my own anxiety with people, the feedback that I always get is I never thought about things in this way before. I've never come across this kind of approach before. So my promise to you is that you're going to learn some things about anxiety that you've never come across before. And for the first time, potentially, you're going to see a system, a step-by-step -step approach for how you can change and transmute anxiety oh. and maladaptive fear into courage and authenticity. We're going to be releasing lots of new material to help you overcome your anxiety. If you don't want to miss out on anything, click the link below so that you can stay up to date.